Shalom, this is Chacham Melech Ben Yaakov of Karaite Insights and the World Alliance of Karaim. And today I'm coming to you with a topic which I think is a very important, and that is conversion. And I use the air quotes because uh, in the Torah there really is no such thing as conversion per se, but that's not what the topic of the video is about. So for the purpose of this video, I will be talking about conversion in the modern sense of those people who want to uh, convert into uh, into charism. And uh, why is this such an important topic? I get very frequently, I would say maybe at least once a week, sometimes more, I get an email which says, uh, Dear Melech Ben Yaakov, uh, I have come to the I've, I've uh, discovered that, or I've come to the conclusion that the Torah is the only true uh, way to go in life, and uh, I've decided that uh, I want nothing more in life than to uh, to become a Karite. I would like to convert to Karism. How do I do it? Uh, so this is a very common thing. There definitely seems to be an awakening of uh, or towards Torah and towards Yehovah. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the world, um, and uh, maybe that's a sign of of, uh, of the end of times. So, because I get that question all the time, I will eventually tell you what I what I generally tell them. But just first of all, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to start right now. I'm going to tell you what I when I generally tell them. So, let's say you call me up or you write me an email and you say, Melech, I've I, I really need your help. I uh, I want to convert to charism. I found that I've decided that Israel and Torah is the only way I want to convert to charism. The first thing I always say to people is uh, that conversion, and again, I'm using that in air quotes, uh, entering, becoming part of the nation of Israel was a very rare thing in ancient times. Okay, we have, we have the two, we really have no instances of it. The only group we have, um, well, two groups. We have the, the Eruv Rav, the mixed multitude that came out of, out of uh, Egypt with Israel. And we really don't know what the story is with that. Why did they come out? Um, did they become part of the nation of Israel? It's not entirely clear, okay? But uh, they came out with Israel. And then the other group we have is the, is the, uh, is the Givonim, the Gibeonites, basically tricked, who basically tricked uh, the Israelites, uh, specifically they, they tricked Yeshua ben Nun into making a swear, into making an oath in the name of Yehoah, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, forced the Israelites to, to essentially make them part of the nation of Israel. And as punishment for finding out that they were tricked, the, uh, the Gibeonites were, were resigned to the lowest classes of, of society, the, the carriers of, of uh, the hewers of wood and the carriers of water, as the phrase goes. So, other than that, all we have, as far as I can see, unless I'm forgetting something, is individuals. We have individuals here and we have individuals there, some of which are mentioned, like Uriah the, the Hittite, perhaps, is the most famous one, um, Evid Melech the Kushite, and there are a couple of others. By the way, Caleb ben Yefuna was not a Ger. I've written about this before. This is a lie of the uh, of the Rabbinites. It's not conceivable that a ger would would uh, would rise to such heights in uh, in Israel, and that perhaps gets to the next point. If one, so the first point is that it's it was very rare to become part of the nation of Israel in ancient times. Uh, if you were a man, if you're a woman, that was a slightly different story. You married in, okay, from the surrounding nations, and even that was prohibited. But uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about actual. Uh, becoming part of the nation of Israel. Well, we're going to talk about men and women. But, uh, okay, so that's the first point to note, is that it was extremely rare. It was a, it was a very unique thing. It was a, it was a specific calling that someone felt um, that they wanted to be part of the nation, like Ruth is the perfect example. And by the way, Ruth, and this is, I don't want to get too off topic, but Ruth did not become part of the nation of Israel when she declared that uh, that uh, that your God is my God, your people are my people, uh, she became part of the nation of Israel when Boaz married her. Okay, so women enter the nation of Israel 
essentially through marriage. Men enter the nation of Israel through the act of circumcision. Okay? So, so getting back to the main point here, conversion, becoming part of the nation of Israel was rare, is rare, and should remain rare. Okay? So this is the first thing I, I tell people. The nation of Israel, as I've been saying for a number of years now, is a, is a race. It's an ethnicity. It's a, it's a linked, extended family of the patrilineal descendants of Yaakov. And if someone from the outside comes in, they're welcome, because we're not allowed to, to oppress the Ger. But first of all, it doesn't mean we have to welcome everybody. But in general, Gerim are welcome. But there's no doubt whatsoever that they, they uh, come in as, I don't want to say lower status, but as on the outside concentric circle of the nation of Israel. The inner concentric circle are the leaders, the, uh, the king, the uh, elders, the judges, the heads of the tribes, the Kohanim, the Levites. The next outer concentric circle is the various tribes, and even there's a hierarchy there, the, the children of, of, uh, of Rachel, uh, then the children of Leah, then the children of the concubines. And on the outside of that concentric circle is the is the gerim, and there are special laws for the gerim. For instance, the ger is allowed to eat nevelah. Um, you're allowed. To, a Israelite is to is allowed to sell, or a native-born Israelite is to, is allowed to sell nevelah. Nevelah is a, an animal that uh, died on its own to a to a ger. I don't believe in this uh, this rabbinical idea of uh, ger tzedek and ger toshav. Again, I don't want to get too far off track here. The point I'm trying to make is. Even when someone enters the nation of Israel as a ger, they are on the they are on the outer concentric circle. They are of a second class. They are a second class citizen. I don't like to use that word because they're certainly part of the nation, but they're on the outer concentric circle, and that's why they're a protected class. That's why in Shabbat it says that you shall not oppress the ger. That's why many times it says you shall not oppress the ger because the ger has no inheritance in the land. The ger is is not a full fledged Israelite and remains not a full fledged Israelite, meaning that a ger's child, the the children. Of a ger, of a male ger, are gerim. Everything goes by the father, and their children are gerim, and their children are gerim, and they have no inheritance to the land except perhaps uh, in the end of times. And we're not at the end of at the end of times right now. So if one does decide to become a ger, then they have to realize that uh, they are on the outer concentric circle. They're in effect a second class citizen. They and their entire descendants, whatever family tree they create over the generations, will remain on that outer concentric circle. They will not. They will not be Ezrahim. They will not be native-born Israelites. They will not have the status of native-born Israelites. They essentially form a tree within the the tree of of Israel of 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 uh, of, of Gerim, and they remain so uh, forever until the end of times because lineage, because patrilineal descent, because one's Yichus, one's one's uh, one's uh, lineage is so important in the Torah. Um, this is this is uh, this is. This is why this is the case, and this is why this is obvious from, from reading and understanding the Torah. So that's the second thing to understand. If one does want to become part of the, the nation of Israel, if one wants to become a Gair, if one wants to convert, um, then and that person uh, does not, is, is always remains a second-class citizen. Unless they can prove their Israelite lineage, which is a whole different subject, maybe through genetics, now, maybe through, uh, I really the only way I think is, is genetics or or uh, or maybe through family tree history, one can prove their Israelite lineage, but uh, unless they can prove it, then there's no way to assume that they are. I always say, my assumption is if one is, is raised a Jew or if one is a Jew, then I assume that they're an Israelite until proven otherwise. If one is not a Jew, then I assume they're a non-Israelite until until pro- proven otherwise. So that, that's the second thing. And the third thing to say, is that there are many ways to be part or to uh, to associate oneself with the nation of Israel without becoming a ger, without becoming part of the nation of Israel. So if we talk about the concentric circles out to the ger, that constitutes now the nation of Israel. If we go further out, then there are two other rings that I have I have come to understand in the Torah. The next is the the nilwe, the nilve you want to pronounce it that way, that is the, we'll call it the supporter, the one who attaches himself or accompanies, no, accompanies the wrong word, but attaches himself uh, and supports the nation of Israel from the outside. These are people who essentially have discovered that they want to, that they believe in the truth of the Torah, they believe that Yehovah is the true 
Elohim of Israel, the true God of Israel. Um, they love the nation of Israel. They want to be associated with the nation of Israel. But at the same time, they want to retain their national identity. They still want to be an American. They still want to be a, 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 a German. They still want to be a, 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 a Filipino or whatever the case may be. They don't want to leave their nation. They don't want to move to the land of Israel. And by the way, that's another essential part of moving to the, of becoming a Ger. A Ger must, at some point, uh, have the clear intention that they, they, they are rejecting their, their any association. I mean, you can always remain loyal. I mean, in some sense, I remain loyal still to the United States of America, not very much, but in some sense, because of, I grew up here, but, uh, but they, uh, essentially, a Gare must reject any association with his, his birth nation and, and adopt the nation of Israel as his nation and move to the land of Israel. If, if a, someone does not have the clear intention at some point to move to the land of Israel, uh, at least in theory, because the land of Israel, I mean, Israel is very messed up right now, then, uh, then one should not have the status of a Gare, and then one could be a Nilwet, and one could be on the next outer concentric circle, which is someone who retains their own national identity, retains their, they, they're proud to be an American, they care about, you know, uh, Civil War history, and they, they love, uh, you know, they love their state of Georgia, or their state of California, and they're proud to be an American, and they fly the American flag, and they never want to give up their American identity, but they have determined that, um, that they, uh, but they have determined that they uh, they want to associate with the nation of Israel. They want to be, uh, uh, in a sense, connected with the nation of Israel. And so one becomes a Nilwe. One remains in his own land, remains his na retains his national identity, but essentially becomes a supportive of the nation of Israel, becomes a follower of Torah, becomes a follower of Yehoah. And by becoming a follower of, of Torah and Yehoah, that means trying to keep or keeping as much of the Torah that is relevant to all of the nations as possible. And in my opinion, there is a lot more in the Torah that is relevant to all of the nations than the, uh, than the rabbis say, or the rabbis, the rabbis, uh, uh, think. The classic example that I always give is, is kashrut, is, uh, keeping the laws of kosher, not the rabbinical laws of kosher, but avoiding disgusting animals such as a pig, such as a snake, such as a rabbit. Um, this is, this is what distinguishes a, a human being from an animal. An animal eats anything. A human being is, is because he's, he's created in the image of, of, of Yehoah. A human being is, uh, is restricted to eat things that which are not disgusting. It's a whole different discussion. I've gotten into it in other videos, but I think that this idea of staying away from unclean, from disgusting animals, what is, what is uh, generally known as keeping kosher, quote unquote, again, not the rabbinical form, but the, the, the Torah form, applies to all the nations, applies to all people, not just the, the, the nation of Israel, and many more things as well. The only things that don't apply specifically, or don't apply to other nations, are those that are specifically have to do with Israel, like for instance, the bringing of the Passover sacrifice, and the keeping of, of Chag HaMatzot, the, the festival of, of, uh, of unleavened bread. Why does that not apply to other nations? Because this is a commemoration of Israel's exodus from Egypt. It's, it's, a, specific, it's a specific incident in uh, in Israel's history, it's a specific incident where where Yehoah um, reasserted himself, reconnected himself with the nation of Israel, <clears throat> and did something great for the nation of Israel, which now becomes uh, a commemorative holiday each year to uh, to to uh, solidify and to recognize the uh, the connection between Yehoah and Israel. So one can be a Nilwe, stay outside, not become a Ger, not become part of the nation of Israel, retain one's one's, uh, one's uh, national identity, but keep as much of the Torah as is relevant to all of human beings, and there's a lot. Do not steal, do not commit adultery. There's so much in the Torah that really is relevant to all of humanity, much more than the rabbis uh, say, because the rabbis, oh, we're not going to go with that, but the rabbis wanted to kind of restrict, keep the Torah in their realm. They wanted to change it so it becomes not relevant to all the world, but of course, anything that Yehoah has to say to the nation of Israel, to, the, to anybody, is going to be relevant to the entire world. And so, so much of the Torah is, is relevant to the entire world. So in Nilwe, someone who's outside that concentric, outside the nation of Israel, but still wants to be connected, deeply connected with the nation of Israel, can become a Nilwe. They can keep as much of the Torah as possible. They can even keep the holidays as kind of, you know, a, a, what's the word? Being, a, there's a specific word I'm looking for, but being a camaraderie with, with Israel or, 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 uh, or, 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 uh, identifying with Israel. They can even keep the holidays, and if they, they don't, you know, they eat matzah one day and eat matzah the next day, it's not the same severity, or it's not the severity, because they're not required by contract, by contractual law known as the Torah, to keep 
that holiday as 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 a member of the Israel of the nation of Israel, meaning the concentric circle, out to and including the Gerim. So that's a perfectly acceptable solution. That is the solution I think that 99.999% of people should eventually have if they want to connect themselves or if they say they want to convert to Israel. Honestly, what they really should do, in my opinion, <clears throat> is become a new way and be connected to Israel from outside of the nation. And only that 0.001% that really feel the calling, I must be part of the nation of Israel. I must move to the land of Israel. I must connect myself eternally to the nation of Israel. They can now become a ger and they will have, they will be part of the nation of Israel, but on that outer concentric circle, the, they will be second class citizens within the nation of Israel. So becoming a nirwe is perfectly acceptable. This is kind of the rabbinical equivalent of becoming a, what they like to call a Noahide. Okay, and uh, just as it's uh, just as the rabbis uh, actually will try to convince people, just become a Noahide first. You know, you don't have to convert. You can just be outside the nation of Israel and, be, and follow the, the seven Noahide laws, as they like to to uh, to uh, call it. So I'm saying basically the same thing. Uh, one can follow the Torah from outside of Israel without making that incredible, incredible commitment of severing one's relationship with his former identity, with his former nation, and actually becoming part of the nation of Israel, okay? And then outside that concentric circle um, are the people who just have no connection to the nation of Israel whatsoever. They're basically what would be called in the Torah, Nechar. Nechar is, uh, is one who is separated or one who is, uh, who is distanced from the nation of Israel. This is a person who is just, you know, your your common person in, in all of the various nations. Doesn't necessarily mean they're they're a bad person. Everyone keeps the Torah to, to some degree, right? People don't generally go around and murder and all this kind of stuff. But they haven't recognized Yehovah as their God. They haven't recognized that they the, the divinity of the Torah and they haven't decided that they want to uh, to uh, be part uh, or connect themselves deeply with the with the nation of Israel. So that's a nechar. So those are the various concentric circles. You have the the nation of Israel going from from the the leaders on out through the various tribes out to the gerim, the convert, quote unquote, out to the nirwe, the one who associates himself or connects himself to Israel, out to the nechar, the rest of the world, basically. Okay, so that's generally what I what I the first spiel that I give to uh to uh to people okay and i'm very serious about it it's not like you know okay you know some will say okay i heard you spiel and you know i want to convert i'm saying really think about it because i've seen many people over the years who say they want to convert and they go you know they go through a various process and after a while they just say oh you know what this is really not for me i just want to i really just you know i want to be a nechar or i want to do something else or i'm not interested in the torah anymore i'm interested in the quran or i'm just interested in being a secular person again uh, for a lot of people it's 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 not something that that remains permanently it's a fad and it may be a fad for one year or two years or even five years but it's a fad so a person really needs to make sure one way or another that this is not a fad if they want to convert quote unquote if they want to become a gear they need to make sure that this is really something that they're serious about and really something that they want i'm just going to find a parking lot here in park so i'm on my way somewhere but i'll just find a place where i can finish this video okay so Let's say, for what, however you've come through your process, you've decided 100% that you now want to be a Ger. You want to be part of, of the nation of Israel, okay? How do you go about doing it? And I think that there's a lot of information in this video. I'm, I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is I'll stop this video here, and I will talk about that in the next video. So we'll, we'll maybe cut this into two videos. Uh, converting to charism number one and converting to charism number two. What I'm going to talk about in the next video is you've decided now you're out, you are outside of the nation of Israel, you are a Nechar or a Nirwe, and you've decided that you want to become a Ger. You want to quote unquote become a, a Ger. How do you do this in this day and age? How do you do it practically speaking? And what I'm going to talk about is you need to define your goals. I'll just give you a quick preview. What are your goals? Do you want to move to the land of Israel? Do you want to move to the, the land of Israel? Then you have to be accepted by the state of Israel, okay? If you want to move there in the next two or three years, okay? The state of Israel is reality right now, okay? Do you not care to move to the land of Israel right now? Then you don't need to be accepted by the state of Israel. Do you want to go to a synagogue? Then you need to be accepted by the congregation of that synagogue. Do you not care? Then you don't need to be accepted. There are all kinds of very practical considerations and I'm going to talk about again various concentric circles okay of 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 you becoming a gear if that's what you decide you want to do and the first thing is it, between you and yourself or you and God the second is uh, 
is between you and, and the Jewish nation, the various Jewish communities that are out there, okay? How do you become part of them? How will they accept you or not accept you? Okay, and the third, and that will be broken down to, to Karaites and Rabbinites and broken down even further than that. And the third concentric circle is practical considerations of the political realities of today, meaning state of Israel, basically is what we're talking about. You wanna make Aliyah, uh, what kind of conversion would you need to make Aliyah? So that's what we're gonna talk about in the next video. I'm gonna stop here. Uh, I would go back and summarize, but I think I've repeated each point very clearly. I don't think there's any need to it just be over repetition at this point. So I'm going to end the video and say that this has been Chacham Melech Ben Yaakov of Karite Insights. And this is the first of, of, uh, of a series of videos. I think there'll only be two, unless I need more. First of a series of videos regarding conversion, quote unquote conversion, into charism or becoming a gear within the nation of Israel. Thank you and talk to you soon.